Morning Club live stream. Everybody, let's stand to our feet in the presence of the Lord. <laughs> Good rim shot, Lord. I like that. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We're so excited to have you here today. Thank you guys for coming in person. Thank you for joining us online. We are stoked about having you out here in the presence of God. Let's get together today. Let's worship in the presence of His, our great Savior, Jesus Christ. Won't you join me today? Yeah? Come on, come on. That was so weak. That was so weak. Won't you join me today? That's what I'm talking about, church. I love it. I love it.
got nothing new How could I express All my gratitude I could sing these songs As I often do Every song I stand I throw up my hands. I throw. 
shine Caught up in the joy and wonder of your presence I coming back to first Coming back to Jesus I'm coming back to you
church. How about we give the Lord a big hand of praise? Man, aren't you, aren't you thankful that we serve a God who died like this? And no matter how far we get out there, no matter how far we run, God says, I want you back. I want you back home. I want you back home in my arms. I want you to come back. And He's like that prodigal father. When we get out there and we go the wrong way, He comes out expecting us to come back at any moment. And when we do, He's ready to, to embrace us, to give us a new set of shoes like He gave the prodigal son, to give us a new robe like He gave the prodigal son, a new ring, and slaughter the fatted calf and all of heaven celebrate because that one that was lost came back into the kingdom of God. Amen? Does anybody else share that testimony with me? Because I'll never forget the day where God broke me. I'd gotten way away from God. I was raised in a pastor's home. I knew better. I, I, got, I, I, I got saved at about six years old. But I was saved. But I, I, I got so far away from Jesus, from His presence. And I, I got baptized at, at seven. I got baptized in the Holy Spirit at nine. I was going to church, but I got so far away. My heart, folks, when it all comes down to it, it's not, it doesn't matter how many good deeds we've done. It doesn't matter what we've said. What matters is God is going to look into our heart on that final day, and He's either going to say, well done, good and faithful servant or he's going to say man I'm sorry I don't know who you are and that's, a, that's a sobering and a scary thought but but while we're still on this earth we still have time to come back to our first love we still have time to come back to the cross where he died with his arms wide open we still have time to say, Father, forgive me. And I'll never forget when I was 33 years old, as many bad things as I had done, as many, as far as I had gotten out there, I said, God, can we just restart the relationship? Can, can we just start all over? And He said, I've been waiting on you to say that. And we did. And we've had a wonderful relationship ever since. Can we give God some praise? this morning. Give your neighbor a high five, a handshake, a holy hug, whatever you feel like doing on your way down to your seat this morning. I get, I get a little uh, emotional every time I think about that day because that was the day that I came back to Jesus. That was the day, you know. I, I, I kind of equate it to the, the title of the message today, by the way, is Restart the Relationship. And, and I kind of, when I was thinking about this message, I couldn't help but thinking about a few years ago when I talked to a member of the Geek Squad. Anybody else ever have to talk to the Geek Squad? You know what I'm talking about? The Geek Squad, in case you don't know, is a, a group of, uh, let's just say, computer nerds. They're talented with computers, and they know how to fix things, and so sometimes you get into a computer problem, and he told me something. He told me, you know, he said, 80% of the problems that I deal with, all you got to do is reboot. How many of you know, sometimes when it's a computer problem, all you got to do is take the plug and pull it, count to 10 and plug it back in. And a lot of times it's like, it's a miracle. The problem is solved. And that's what I felt like I did with Jesus because I, w 
I, I had him as my Lord and Savior. I knew better. I grew up in a pastor's home. I grew up in church. Yet I got away and I got so far out there that I just basically said, God, can I just hit the reboot button? And he said, I'm glad you did. And so that's what I want to talk about today. I want to look at if, uh, Revelations chapter 3, verse... Revelation chapter 3. See, I just said it wrong. I said Revelations. Did you know that the, the title of the book is The Revelation? Or in the, in the old... I've got a Bible that's a little older, and it says The Revelation of Jesus Christ. That was the old name of the book, and then they just shortened it to The Revelation. But it's, it's The Revelation because I, I think people sometimes think, well, it's Revelations, like there's a bunch of Revelations in this book. But there's really only one. It's the revelation of Jesus Christ. It's the first five words of the book. And so when you keep that in mind, as you, uh, as you interpret the book of Revelation, it, it's kind of helpful in, in maybe one day, well, I'll, I'll do it quickly, but uh, all throughout the Bible, what's happening in the news right now is, 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 happen, is in the Bible. And I will say this, what is happening right now in Israel could lead up to the Ezekiel 38 war. I don't think it's there yet, but I think it could. If, uh, if Russia gets involved and um, a couple other things happen, it could very well be the Ezekiel 38 war, in case you don't know. The Ezekiel 38 war happens just before the tribulation. So we need to be ready. I don't say that to scare you. I say that to prepare you. And if you translate, by the way, the word Hamas into the original Hebrew, it means violence. They've lived up to their name, haven't they? And don't believe any news that tries to make you feel sympathetic towards Hamas. Because Hamas are a violent bunch of demons. I'm just going to call it like anybody that jumps over a wall and just destroys people. Any serial kill killer in America has got a demonic problem. Any serial killer over there in Israel has got a demonic problem. Remember what the scripture says. He's come to what? Steal, kill, and destroy. That's, that's the enemy's mission, period. And so anytime you see that in the news, I think, okay, there's, we need to pray in the name of Jesus. And that's, that's why I'm saying this, because we're about to do that. We're about to pray in the name of Jesus. And by the way, just another side note before we pray. The word Palestine, Palestinian, it was from the word Philistine. Hadrian, Roman emperor, uh, had the spirit of Antichrist. You're seeing the spirit of Antichrist today, by the way, when you see all these protests and things all around the world that are protesting the Jews. That's the spirit of Antichrist. I want you to be aware of that. And you can read about it in the book of Jude, all through the Bible, the spirit of Antichrist. And so, uh, and so Hadrian, this Roman emperor, said, we're not going to call it Israel, even though the Bible promised in Genesis 12 and Genesis, all through Genesis, the Bi God promised Abraham the promised land. And by the way, when you read the borders of the promised land, it was a lot bigger than what they occupy today. It spread a lot further to the east. It was a lot bigger, the promised land. And so Israel, the Jews, did not kick anybody out of, they're the indigenous people. You understand? They're the, they're the ones that God promised that land to. Others have come in, and Hadrian renamed it Palestine, or Philistine, because it's the land of the Philistines. And he, tr and he tried to kick, and, he, and the Jews scattered abroad, and they came back and formed a nation in 1948. That's just a little bit of history. So, uh, if, you, if you hear the word Palestine or Palestinian, you should think Philistine. Think about your Bible history and think Philistine. When you hear the word Hamas, it literally means violence. And so I just want to pray. Is that okay to pray for Israel right now? We have a pastor over there that we're supporting right now. His name is Pastor Israel Pakhtar, and I want to lift him up. Father, I thank you for you give us the authority... And you give a no weapon formed against us shall prosper. And, and the church is just bigger than Lifespring. The church is just bigger than Rockwall County. The church is bigger than the state of Texas, than the United States of America. The church extends all over the world. And it's your church, Jesus. 
And your church is in Israel right now. And your church is suffering. We lift up Pastor Israel Pakhtar that's pastoring in Ashdod right now. We pray give his people and give him strength. Lord, let them stand up for the truth. Let them stand up for what's right. And we declare no weapon formed against them shall prosper in Jesus' name. We bind the power of Hamas. We bind the power of Hezbollah. We bind the power of the enemy that would seek to kill, steal, and destroy from God's people. We bind the power of the enemy that's in America right now that would seek to kill, steal, and destroy from God's people. We bind that power in the mighty name of Jesus and we say, Satan, Lord, rebuke you in Jesus' name. And God, speaking of that, we bind any power that would try to distract us from this message and let the Holy Spirit speak directly to our heart and loose, loose your power, Holy Spirit, on your people. In Jesus' name we pray. And everyone said, Amen. So this is the last message in this series, uh, the seven churches of Revelation. And today it's called Restart Your Relationship. And it's about the church at Laodicea. So if we look at Revelation chapter 3, in verse 14, we say, To the angel of the church of Laodiceans write, These things says the Amen, God, the faithful and true witness. And if you open your Bible, if you brought a paper Bible, you'll see that this is in red, just like in the book of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Jesus said these words. And uh, the beginning of creation of God. I know your works, God said, Jesus said, that you are neither cold nor hot, I could wish you were cold or hot. Now hold on to that and let's not misinterpret this because I think we've misinterpreted this many times before. And the next verse says, So then because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will vomit, and that's the proper Greek word, vomit you out of my mouth because you say I am rich, have become wealthy, and have need of nothing, and do not know that you are wretched, and, and do you not know that you are wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked? And the Bible goes on to say, I counsel you to buy from me, Jesus, gold refined in the fire, that you may be rich, and white garments, that you may be clothed, that the shame of your nakedness may not be revealed, and anoint your eyes with eye salve, that you may see. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Therefore, be zealous and repent. Do you know that word repent is in all parts of the seven letters to the church? I, uh, behold, the famous verse, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and dine with him and he with me. To him who overcomes, I will grant to sit with me on my throne as I also overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. And then finally it finishes the way all the others finish. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Now let me ask you a question. Have you ever got anything out of the book of Romans? When you read Romans? That's a lot of the salvation passages are in the Romans Road. Well, that was a letter to the Church of Rome. Have you ever got anything out of the book of Ephesians? That was a letter to the church at Ephesus. Have you ever got anything out of the book of Colossians? That was a letter to the church at Colossae. And on and on, Thessalonians, Thessalonica. So please don't interpret this passage that we've been reading and studying as, oh, that was a letter to the seven churches of Asia, and it's not for me. No, 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 that's why he says, he who has an ear, a spiritual ear, get what I'm trying to say, because I've been saying for the past seven weeks, return to your first love. Remember God's faithfulness. Refuse to compromise. Resist the enemy. Remove the dead things. Receive your keys in your new name. Remember that last week? And today, restart your relationship. Do you receive a word from Jesus today? Four of you? Really? Okay. I'll try to do better. Have another cup of coffee. So why 
If you look in your, in your Bible, it says the lukewarm church or the lukewarm Christian. Why does it represent this? Well, it may not be what we think. What it's really talking about is Jesus always used an analogy that would reach his people. And do you realize this is a letter to the church? It's not a letter to the lost, although there are lost in the church. It's a letter to the church. Do you understand? This is a letter to Christians. This is a word to Christians. And so Jesus was trying to reach the Christians. And Jesus is still trying to reach the Christians that are having a problem. Let me ask you in a different way. How's your passion in your relationship with Jesus? You know, sometimes a passion, how many of you know, we'll be honest, a passion in a marriage can be on highs and a passion on a marriage can be on lows. Am I the only one? Are y'all looking at me all holy like, not me, man, I'm on fire for my wife, hallelujah! Well, I am too, but I'll be honest, there are times when her passion <laughs> is a little lower and my passion is a little lower, but we've been married for 29 years. And it's the same with Jesus Christ. There are times when you're just not going to feel like it. Life has treated you badly. You're going through some hard times. There's some things that are rough. And so you just say, God, man, i got to be honest, I'm having a trouble with my passion for you. And that's what I did at age 33. You know, I hadn't cried for about 15 years at age 33, and God broke me. I tell another man who is laughing right now, and he knows who he is, because <laughs> he often tells the men in the men's ministry he hasn't cried in a long time, and I, say, I point out, I say, God is going to break you, because he broke me. I won't reveal the, his identity or anything. <laughs> I won't let you know who he is, but he's, he's, he's uh, Navy tough. He's Navy tough. He's in armed forces tough. And I love him. But God's going to break him one day, and he's going to cry like a baby like I did. <laughs> proves you have a soul. When your eyes leak, proves you have a soul. But here's what Jesus was doing. He was trying to reach the people and say, hey, I know where you're at. And they had a big problem in Laodicea, and you know what the problem was? A water problem. They had a town called Hierapolis that was uh, six miles to the north, and Hierapolis was known for its hot springs. It had great hot water. And so they built a, a channel from uh, Hierapolis down to Laodicea for six miles. You can go over there and see the ruins today. And, and the hot water would travel down that pipe, but the pipe was not made of metal. And so guess what happened by the time the hot water traveled six miles and got to the town of Laodicea? It was lukewarm. And it also collected some sediment along the way. And it had lime in it. Has anybody ever been, you don't see this much anymore, but have you ever been to a small town and the water smelled like rotten eggs? Because it had sulfur in it. And it was kind of nasty tasting. Well, the, 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 the town of Laodicea was known for if you drank their water, not only would you spit it out, but you, it would make you gag. That's how bad their water was. Because not only did they have that problem, but 10 miles to the, to the uh, east of them was a town called uh, Colossae, where Colossians was written to. Colossae. And they had uh, cold, cool springs. And they built clay pipes instead of metal pipes again. And they, uh, and they brought the water in from Colossae. It was nice and cold in Colossae. But by the time it reached Laodicea, guess what it was? Lukewarm. And so they had a bad water problem. They couldn't drink the water. They had to either go collect it up in Hierapolis and bring it down or go collect it in Colossae and bring it down. Now let me just, you say, well, why would you need hot water? Why would you need cold water? Let me ask you, how many coffee drinkers do we have in here? I join you in your quest. I'm a coffee drinker. And some of you say, I don't like coffee, but maybe you like a good hot chocolate in the wintertime. 
with marshmallow. Everybody I know that doesn't drink coffee, they at least like hot chocolate, right? And, or maybe hot tea. But don't you just love to get around a fire and sit and sip on a cold winter day and sip on a lukewarm cup of chocolate? No, you don't. <laughs> or, or don't you, in the summertime when it's so hot, remember how oppressive our summer was in, in the middle of July and it's 112 degrees outside and you've been working outside and you're sweating and you're hot and man, a good cold cup of water or iced tea. But would you like it if it was lukewarm? That's what Jesus was saying here. He wasn't talking about their salvation necessarily. He was talking about, because he said, I wish you would be hot or cold. Jesus would never wish anybody would grow cold in their salvation. Because if, you, if, if, if people go to hell, they're separated eternally from God. Jesus would never wish that on anybody. So you can't say that he's talking about salvation here because he said, I wish you were either hot or cold. That's not the proper interpretation. The proper interpretation is he's saying, I wish you, cause hot water has a purpose and cold water has a purpose. Are you following me? He said, I wish you would figure out what your purpose is and I wish you would taste good to unbelievers because the Bible says, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Are, are you with me? So the first point that Jesus was getting across here is spiritual wealth. I said spiritual wealth. I'll say it again, spiritual wealth, because sometimes when you hear the word wealth, it, unfortunately it's been abused by many televangelists and they preach this prosperity gospel that, that says it's for me, me, me. And if I do this, I'll get rich. And that's not what the Bible teaches. The Bible teaches that if you give and you have a generous spirit, God will bless you and you are blessed for one purpose only, to be a blessing. You are blessed in everything that comes in. You are, you are blessed to pass on that blessing to others. Are, are you with me? That's what, the, that's what my Bible teaches. Amen. So, so spiritual wealth. Revelation 3.18. That, look at the part where it says, I counsel you to buy from me gold refined by the fire. What did he mean by that? Well, if you, if you look at uh, 1 Peter 1, 7, you can kind of see the scripture interprets itself. I counsel to buy gold from me refined by... In other words, spiritual wealth. How many of you know anything that's worth anything costs something? And you say, well, salvation is free. Yes, it is. Grace is free. Yes, it is. You can't earn it. But let me tell you something. Jesus shared a cost with you. He shed His blood for you. He gave His blood for you and me. So it cost Him something. And all He asks in return is something that costs you. You say, what is that? It costs us faith. And in that beautiful exchange, He gave His blood, we give Him faith. Where's that in the Scripture? Well, it's right here in 1 Peter 1.7. It says, these trials will show that your what? Faith. faith is genuine. You know how if you pray, God, build my faith. God, I need more faith. God, build my faith. Guess what? He will answer that prayer. He's going to bring you a trial. Yay! As, because it's being tested as fire tests and purifies gold. Though your faith is far more precious than mere gold. See, spiritual wealth. So when, uh, so when your faith remains strong through many trials, it will bring you much praise and glory and honor on the day when Jesus Christ is revealed to the whole world. Amen. But then it goes on to say, that's what it costs us. What did it cost Him? For you know that God paid a ransom to save you from the empty life you inherited from your ancestors, and it was not paid with mere gold or silver which lose their value. It was the what? Precious blood of Jesus Christ, the sinless, spotless Lamb of God. Aren't you thankful for that? So what He's saying is, hey, 
I've got something much more valuable for you than gold or silver. Next time you say, God, I'm in a financial bind, he might say, well, I've got something much more precious than that. I spilt my blood for you. And here's what I found, guys, time after time after time. If you find yourself in a financial challenge, if you put God first, no matter what, all the rest of it will take care of itself. God keeps good books. I see some of you nodding your head like, yep. And so he, had, he wants us to have spiritual wealth. By the way, did you know what Laodicea was known for in the day? Three things. They were known for being one of the wealthiest towns in the largest banking center that they used gold to trade with, gold and silver. They were known for... Uh, uh, Spiritual, so, so wealth, they were known for health. That's my second point, spiritual health. Spiritual health, it, they were known for a large medical school where they trained doctors. And one of the, what they were specifically known for in that town was an ophthalmology school, like training doctors to, to treat the eyes. And that's why Jesus said, it said that this community would say in Revelation 3.18, he said, Buy from me gold. And then on down that last line, he says, And anoint your eyes with eye salve that you may see. Can I share with you something? A lot of Christians today have problems because they can't see. Are you with me? You say, what do you mean by that? Well, let me just say it like this. Because I've... I've I've experienced this before, and I bet you have too. But when you allow pride to puff up in your spirit, when I allow pride to puff up in my spirit, and when I begin to think it was me and it wasn't him, then I begin to go blind spiritually. And all of a sudden I lose touch with what my purpose is, what I'm supposed to be doing. Can I share with you something very, very personal? You promise you won't tell anybody? That's what Jesus used to do, and they would tell everybody. Now, I'm not saying this because it doesn't matter if you, if you tell people. It's kind of common knowledge. But for 25 years, God has blessed my wife and I with a business. And we have been plowing the fields <laughs> in the concrete business. And I'm known in a lot of Rockwall County's phones as Concrete Man Rex. I'm known as, you know, uh, you, you know, that's all we do specialize in is, is concrete and stone and things like that, landscape walls, outdoor kitchens, all that kind of stuff. And if you, if you walk out the door, you'll see some beautiful concrete that was laid by the company God gave us right outside the door. And so God has blessed that to us and entrusted that to us because we've always put him first. And we've always used it as a tool to build the kingdom of God. And we've always realized that my purpose in life is not to be the best concrete man in Rockwall County in the state of Texas. My purpose in life is to build the kingdom of God. Amen. And But when, it, when we allow pride and, and we allow things to get in the way of our purpose, all of a sudden our vision gets cloudy. So God spoke to me at the beginning of the year and he spoke to my wife first. I, that's, that's one way I, I have confirmation in my, in my house is he speaks to her first and says, you better prepare yourself. But he spoke to us to give up a, 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 a business that was generating a million dollars a year gross income to give that up and just give it to our kids, to, to, our, to our daughter and son-in-law who's been working with me in that business and just give it to them. And I said, God, did you say give it? He said, I want you to give that to them. God, did you say give that? I mean, I was planning on, you know, my plan, God, was to kind of ride through that little machine all the way until retirement, you know, and my financial planners, you know, they would always be in a quandary because they'd say, okay, what's your this, this, and this? And I would tell them the business, and they would go, well, you're, you're good. And, and so I, I, that, that was my plan, God, and plus... That's always been the top tither of Live Spring Church has been that concrete business. Because I didn't just tithe off of the 
profit, I tithe off the income. It's been the top tither. And so God said, no, I want you to give it. I don't know what he has planned. I know, I know that, you know, I, I do know, I do know what he has planned. He has planned for myself and Amy to be the full-time pastor of Last Spring Church. That's what he's got planned. So, we not, may not make as much, but that's up to God. And so, God's going to take care of us. I know that. God's going to take care of us. But I realized that it's not my purpose to be a concrete man. That's been a vehicle and a source. So fill in the blank, whatever you do for a living, doctors, lawyers, uh, business owners, you know, employees, working for a company this or company that, you should be the best at what you do, but that's not your purpose in life. Are you with me? Yeah. Teachers, educators, that's not your purpose in life. It's not even my purpose in life to be Amy's husband. Don't worry, I'm not leaving her. It's, it's, that's, that's something that is a blessing to me that I say, thank you, Lord, that I get the opportunity to be her husband. It's not even my purpose in life that I'm supposed to be Brennan and Brittany's father. That's not my purpose in life. That's, I, I'm thankful. I get to be Brennan and Brittany's father. That's an opportunity that I get to serve in. Are you with me? Yeah. It's, 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 it's my purpose in life to do what Jesus has called me to do. And all those other things are on the side. Yeah. I'm not a grandpa. I'm a spanky. And that's a Mimi back there. We're spanky and Mimi. But it's not my purpose in life to be spanky and Mimi. And if the Lord sends us another one down the road to be spanky and Mimi, to that one. And so, that's not our purpose to be the best. That, that's something we get to do. Are, are you following me? Yes. So you say, well, well, so at any time, I can reboot my passion for God. At any time, I can reboot my purpose for God. So what I'm saying and I'm trying to tell you today is restart your passion for God. I'm trying to tell you, restart your purpose for God. And finally, the third thing is, restart your participation for God. Why is that third one so important? Because Jesus said, hey, you think you're rich, and, and no matter how successful you've been in life, He could say that again. You think you're rich, but it's not about putting up silver and gold and dollar signs in your bank account. It's about souls. And I've blessed you with a business. I've blessed you with a practice. I've blessed you to be an educator. I've blessed you with whatever you have so that you can build the kingdom of God and add as many souls as you can to me. Amen? Because you know what? We can know it, but until we do it, I have to physically take my hand and pull the plug from that computer and count to ten and plug it back in. I don't know how you reboot. Some people do Control-Alt-Delete. Man, anybody can do that. Try, try grabbing the plug and manhandling it and pulling it out. Count to ten loud and plug it back in. I, it just, I'm, playing, I'm joking. But however you do it, you reboot your computer, but until you reboot, your computer's broken. I'm not saying you guys are broken. I'm not saying that at all. I'm saying that if you feel like I do today, if you feel like, God, I could do better in my passion for you. If you feel like I do today, God, I could do better in my purpose for you. If you feel like today, God, I could do better in my participation for you. You know why God gave a church to you and to me? So that we have an opportunity to serve one another and serve our community. Period. Well, that thought is to come in and get blessed. I want to just get blessed and I want the anointing to fall and the Holy Spirit. To... I want all those things too. But if I don't serve, I haven't rebooted. 
I've got to use what God gives me and not take, 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 but let it flow out. And I thank God for all of you because most all of you are doing that in one way or the other. But he said in Revelation 3.18 that he has a new garment for you. And he, he says this all through the scripture. Isaiah 61.10 says it like this. I'm overwhelmed with joy in the Lord my God for he has dressed me with the clothing of salvation and draped me in a robe of righteousness. I am like a bridegroom dressed for his wedding or a bride with her jewels. All through the Bible, it says that we as the church are two things. And we just need to choose to ignite our passion with our Lord and Savior, to ignite our purpose with our Lord and Savior, and to ignite our participation level with our Lord and Savior. Amen. And so in closing, I just want to tell you what it means to have a new garment in the Bible because whenever there's a story about someone got a new garment, like do you realize the prodigal son, when he got the new garment, you know what that was symbolically, spiritually saying? It was symbolically, spiritually saying, I receive you again, son. You're my son. You're not a servant. You're not a slave. You're my son. And you have a new identity. And Jesus says, when you uh, will ignite your passion for me and when you will ignite your purpose and your participation for me you are a son you are a daughter of the most high God and I have a new identity for you in fact we're the light of the world we're the city on a hill we're the people of the world we are salt and light we are prophetic not pathetic we are disciples witnesses and Christ followers we are apostles prophets, pastors, evangelists, and teachers. We are children of the cross, fruit of the empty tomb, and a product of the upper room. Is anybody going to say amen besides my dad? We are the redeemed of the Lord, the sheep of His pasture. We're forgiven, free, and favored. We are called and chosen. We are warriors and worshipers. We are world changers, and we are history makers. We are the church of Jesus Christ, and the gates of hell will never ever, ever prevail against us. That's our new identity. It's not concrete, man. It's not alcoholic or drug addict or whatever you were before you got saved, before you renewed that passion. But I want to close with this verse. Because in Revelation 3.20, this is what God is saying. I want you to think about this. The God of the universe the God who created the heavens and the earth. The God who made everything. The God who has this earth suspended on nothing. Spinning around at a thousand miles an hour. And we don't even get dizzy. The God who did all that and, put, and angled the earth at 23 degrees. Perfectly tilted on its axis to, to receive the proper amount of heat and sunshine and and revolve around the sun and all the Milky Way and beyond, all the things that God created and did for us. He's standing at the door and He's knocking on the door of our hearts. And you remember what I talked about last week? He has the key of David. He can open doors that nobody can open. And He can close doors that nobody can close. And the God of the universe could open the door of our heart if He wanted to. But you know what He does? He chooses to be polite and just stand there and knock. And say, I'm not going to open the door of your heart. you got to open the door of your heart. And if you do, I will come in. I'll have fellowship with you. You see that word dine? Or the King James says sup. Depending on you, if you're from the south, you have supper. If you're from the north, you have dinner. But I will... Fell the, the, the Jewish culture, their dinner would last for three hours. It was the most important meal of the day where the family got together and they talked and they fellowship and they ate and they laughed for hours in the evening. He said, if anybody will open the door... I'll come in your heart and I will hang out with you and I will explain and teach you all the things that's in here. 
And I will share with you all that I know and I will bless you so that you will have spiritual wealth and your passion will be ignited. And you will have spiritual health and vision so that your purpose will be ignited. And I will explain very clearly to you what your purpose is on this earth. And if you participate with me, I have so much more to give you. I just feel like today, if this message is for you, oh, it's for me. If this message is for you and you say, yes, Pastor, I need to restart my passion for Jesus. I need to up my passion level for Jesus. I just want to ask you to stand up. If that's you today, if you want to say, I want to up my passion for Jesus Christ, just stand up today. If it's not for you, don't worry. But if it's for you, I want to up my passion. And then, let's take it to the next level. I believe this message is for me. I want to understand what my purpose is very clearly in the kingdom of God. I want Jesus. I'm going to open the door of my heart. And I want Jesus to come in. And I want to fellowship with Him. And I want Him to explain some things and show me some things. And I want to see the revelation of Jesus Christ with my spiritual eyes and hear with my spiritual ears. If that ministers to you this morning, step out of the comfort zone and come down here and say, that's me, Pastor. That's me. That's me too. That's me too. I want to reignite my purpose, reignite my passion, and reignite my participation. So as you're coming down here today as a sign of commitment to Jesus, I just want to pray a prayer over you. And I just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you, Jesus. Lord, these are the people I love so much. This is my family. This is the people that you've brought here to this place so that we can serve one another, so that we can reach out together with an arm of evangelism and reach our community for you. And God, I pray as we have stepped out today, Lord, we are saying, God, reignite. I want to reboot my passion in Jesus' name, my passion for you. Lord, we're saying, I want to reignite. I want to reboot my purpose. God, you're not finished with me yet. And I know the day that you're finished with me on this earth is the day I stand before you in heaven. And as long as I'm breathing and the heart is beating and I'm healthy on this earth, then you've got a passion and a purpose. And it's up to me to do the participation part. So I'm saying, Father, today... I participate with you in the mighty name of Jesus. And everyone said, Amen. Can we give God some praise? Let's do a little better. Let's show some passion. Let's say hallelujah. Let's shout to God with the voice of triumph. Let's say victory. Come on, church. Let's get excited about Jesus. And I want you to take that excitement to your friends and your neighbors and your family members and tell them, man, you missed it. Can I tell you what happened last Sunday at church? share with us. You can share these. I love y'all very much. I have to leave to go catch a plane because my honey wants to take a honeymoon up to Vermont and New Hampshire and I ain't going to turn her down. Hallelujah. Yeah. Let's go and see some leaves. Give a little further in depth on that story as well, actually. I was always confused about why the reboot works so well. Uh, whenever a computer loads up, it boots up about 200 lines of code, which means about 200 decisions have to be made by the computer. And if it gets one of those decisions wrong, it's think of it as a maze. It gets stuck in this giant maze and it can't get out. It just can't quite get out. It doesn't know where it is. It doesn't know where to go next because its code is messed up. And so when you unplug it, you replug it back into the source, all of a sudden, the maze is wiped clean.
about the importance of tithing. And I wish I could have every single one of them out here and speak to me on this Because they, they have so much more wisdom than myself. It is highly important, not only to your physical well-being, and this is all in Malachi 3, not only to your physical well-being, not only to your mental well-being, not only to your financial well-being, but to your family's well-being, to your spiritual well-being. It, it, it takes care and it encompasses and protects an entire human being, an entire soul, spirit, body, mind, everything. That's why we believe it's so important. Uh, a couple of announcements we have for you today. One, if you are an honored guest here today, we are so excited to have you. Thank you so much for taking the time out, coming to visit us, being with us today. Thank you guys so much. We appreciate it. Oh my gosh, we appreciate it. Welcome to our live spring family. All right, welcome in. I've noticed I've seen some new faces that just don't stop coming, and I love it. I hope you never stop coming. I've seen some old faces that just don't stop coming, and I love it. And I hope you never stop coming. <laughs> welcome guest. Please meet us out the lobby. Find myself, find anyone on the staff here. We have a gift for you. We want to give you a gift. If you have any questions about the church, please don't hesitate to ask. Or if you don't want to ask personally, you can ask anonymously. Uh, we'll text welcome to 972 402 6456. If you answer any questions we can, please fill out the community card as well. That just helps us connect. Grow with you, life with you. Because that's what we want to do. That's where we grow together. Where the battleground is. Amen. Number two, all my ladies say, hey, yo. Oh, so, I was dainty. My wife doesn't like to, like to be called me. She likes to be called dainty. It's so dainty. Oh, my goodness. Let's try that again, ladies. Come on. With a little bit of enthusiasm. Ready? Three, two, one. the ladies brunch this weekend Saturday okay October 28th 10 a.m. RSVP oh you RSVP I'm not sure you just text ladies brunch how about that we'll get it sorted out you text ladies brunch to our church number 97 in case I said that too fast 972 402 6456 alright uh, we will get you RSVP Uh, and then lastly, we have our Freedom Group meeting this Wednesday. Please don't miss an opportunity. We always tell our vision here every Sunday, and it's find who? God. Find what? Find a maker. We want that for you guys. Every single day, every second, every hour of your life, we want you to find God already found them. We want you to find freedom. And that's why we have a group here at Wednesday night school. Uh, it's going to be at 630. You have found freedom. You need to find a purpose. Get your boy up. Kid Life always needs some more staff. Alright? Wow. And if you have found freedom, we want you to make a difference. When you found purpose, we want you to make a difference with that purpose. We want you to do an excellent job working with that purpose. We want to help you. Amen. Amen. That's all the announcements I have. Hey, let's send you off. Oh my gosh, I almost forgot. One of the lovely ladies, if you recognize this phone, if this is your phone, uh, please, I uh, believe Michael's coming to grab it right now. Somebody grab it from the back. My goodness, the enemy comes to kill, steal, and destroy, but ice cream comes to restore, thank you. All right? Uh, let's pray a blessing. Blessing over you, Father. Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for this wonderful day, this day that we can rejoice and be glad. Thank you for this, this spiritual food, God, this mentoring you've given us today. Lord, I pray that we take this with us, God. We take this renewed passion. God, go out to the world and make a difference. Let us make a difference as well. In Jesus' name. Amen. Y'all won't want to miss Fired Up next week. Coming back to first Coming back